Okay guys, welcome back to a delayed second review of the EMG Taran Tactical Sand Viper. Um, now, I wanted this second review to be a kind of post-battle report, as well as a quick teardown and maintenance guide for you all, and that'll be in the description, hopefully. Now, for this, uh, this pistol, it has been amazing. Um, we took this down to Battle Stations Airsoft, which is just outside Thetford um and well let's just say i put down my uh, uh my main riff for the entire day and just played with this after about five minutes so i ended up taking both with me i thought this would just be a secondary and then i used this as my primary for the entire day um now quick little bits of feedback i'm going to go over some paint loss um because this has suffered paint loss um i've dropped it i've fell over onto it um as you do uh, I'm a pretty clumsy soul so I'm a good a good I'm a good reviewer as far as it goes to uh to really putting weapons through their uh, paces so I'll have a look at the paint and what's come off and uh kind of my thoughts on it um and then we'll also have a, a look on put well, we'll talk about performance as well really simply off the bat though um I found that with this pistol, you know, there are people at the field that have got pistols worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds more than this gun, and this was keeping up absolutely fine. Um, it does turn heads, um, and also has a fair few compliments about it too, so if you want something that is mildly unique, because there are a few people running these out there, um, but, you know, unique enough to turn heads and get compliments, this is a great pistol for you. Um, as far as it goes for performance comparative to those other people's guns, um, this is just as fast. Obviously, people with short stroked pistols, which uh, for any of you not in the know, it just means that the slide has left travel, which means that you can have a slightly faster fire rate. Don't really see any major effects comparative to this because at the end of the day, most pistols are going to fire as fast as you can pull the trigger. Um, uh, obviously, this does have a relatively long slide travel, so Again, even though it's as fast as you can pull the trigger, this will fire slightly slower than some other people's pistols on the field. But at the end of the day, it only takes one, uh, one BB to get someone out. And uh, that's very much how this pistol operated. The range on it is phenomenal. To give you an idea, um, we were in the longest portions of their CQB arena. This thing was hitting walls uh, quite a distance away. Um, and this B the BBs are traveling farther than what you can see them, which is absolutely amazing. Um, the only thing I will say is, is the hop-up unit um, that comes stock with this. Uh, I'm already planning to put the crazy jet replacement in it because um, the hop-up unit that comes with it. Um, let's just say if you look down the barrel of this gun, you can see bits of plastic and this, that and the other. But it's uh, it's all the hop rubber. Um, it's not that good quality. There's little, you can see little uh, kind of like frills popping off of it. I've cleaned this all up myself, but you shouldn't have to do that with a brand new gun. Um, so I would recommend putting in the drop-in crazy jet unit. Um, because um, that's all pre-installed it's a great piece of tech and everybody's recommended it to me too um it won't do a hell of a lot because at the end of the day um pistols are just pistols but for for this we will enable you to shoot a slight bit farther with a more reliable hop up and slightly more reliable accuracy but this thing's already a laser beam out of the box all right into oh, enough of me waffling on about um uh, kind of how I felt firing the gun very quickly um, just to get it out of the way mags I'm using um, some EMG mags that I've just uh, converted the uh, end piece off of so um, these are EMG zone mags they are not made specifically for this gun you can buy the base plate separately um, these mags that I've been running are phenomenal and they will get through at least two full magazines worth of BBs before you need to regas them um, and that's, same, that's the same standard as the magazine that comes with the actual pistol um, the magazine is the same it's just a slightly different colour um, and again, yeah, you're going to get two full magazines worth of uh, ammunition out of this gun before you need to uh, regas any of the mags. Fantastic. Um, as far as it goes for paint loss on the pistol, uh, on this side, not that much. You can see there's a small scuff down here, um, some little nicks uh, towards the end of the barrel. Um, I think this was probably me putting it in and out of the holster. It's just caught and it's taken some paint off on the end. But this actually... I'm a bit of a weirdo. I think this actually makes it look kind of cool. Uh, I quite like the actual realistic wear and tear on the weapon. It kind of gives it a little bit more character and it shows it's been used. So these ones I'm not that worried about. What I am worried about is, is one small drop on the floor and suddenly the entirety on the uh, flare magma on the back here has come off completely. 
I do think that EMG need to up their game with paint because um, I have had never had a gun that has lost this much paint in uh, so little time uh, just through uh, usage. So I would definitely say um, if you're a person who likes to keep your uh, your uh, equipment pristine, this is not going to be a pristine gun. However, if you like a gun that shows wear and tear and kind of looks battle worn, this is the pistol for you. Uh, I'm not too fussed with the, the wear I've seen on this pistol so far. Um, because I intend in the future, I really want to have all of the uh, all of the things that I pick up custom painted anyway. Um, so this is just a short story in the life of this pistol, and it will be seeing uh, more paint in the future. Other than that, I've had no real op uh, no real issues with the pistol. The extended mag release was not as much of an issue as I first thought it would be. You'll see in my review, it's very very big. Um, so I thought it would get in the way, but it was no issues whatsoever. And this gun again. Uh, used it all day long, no firing issues, no feeding issues, no nothing. This was fantastic. Just want to do a quick teardown for any of you guys that were curious about maintenance. Um, easiest way to start this, and it's the same with most uh, high cappers, you've got a little bit on this side here. And you've got this bit on this side here. So this is your this is your slide release. Um, but if you push on this side, you'll see there's a little indent. There's two indents. This is what the uh, slide gets caught in when you rack it back and push it up. That's what it gets caught in when you're out of uh, out of ammo in your mag. And you slide it forwards. There's a tiny little indent. Oh, whoopsie daisy, not my camera there. Uh, there's a tiny little indent to one side here. So you're going to line up the very top bit here with that bit there. You're going to push, and this should oh god pop out. You're then going to let the mag go very slowly. Don't let it go because it will shoot off the end if you've got a powerful enough spring. Um, and this will all slide from the upper and lower. So for the lower, um, maintenance wise, all you really ever have to do with this is any points where you've seen paint wear after your first game, best thing to do is, is to lube those areas because there's friction there. Uh, it's not unusual. These are not milled to like the most amazing tolerance, which means there's always going to be a bit of paint wear on the internals. You're never going to see them. Um, but what this does is, is it means that as this wears down, it will wear down smoothly and eventually what will happen is, is the whole uh, the whole pistol will settle, you won't get any more wear and it will run as smoothly as possible, but it's good to keep these places lubed up. Um, if you, at the end of the video, I'll, I'll cut and I'll show you what I'm using to uh, clean the gun out. But yes, I would recommend cleaning these bits here and where the firing pin, uh, where the hand firing hammer is, not the pin. Um, any areas where you've seen slight paint loss here as well. And here, again, just lubing those up. I've already done it with this pistol. I did it as soon as I got back and I cleaned it up. <clears throat> what I would recommend you do as well is, is when you are taking apart the pistol, note any areas that have dirt on them or any areas with these scuffs, wipe them down with a, with a dry uh, rag so that everything's clean. Uh, don't apply oil into a surface that has kind of like, uh, like a black chalky substance or powdery substance on it. That's metal that's come off of your gun and you're effectively creating um, kind of like a sandpaper-like environment for your gun. You've just got debris mixed with, uh, with, uh, with the oil and uh, it'll make the wear on your gun go a lot faster, which is what you don't want. That's really all you're going to do with the lower. Again, you want them to squirt a little bit of lube down into that bit there too. Awesome. As far as it goes to the top, uh, not much really to touch on the top. Again, you're just looking for parts of wear. Um, so, for example, on this, uh, you've got bits here where you've got slight bits of paint loss or discoloration. Lube those areas up. They'll do absolutely fine. Um, the main thing that people forget about is, again, you've got a little bit of the back. You want to get that covered too. But if you pull down your nozzle at the front here and you pull it down far enough, it will expose this little bad boy right here. And if you push it, it's actually slightly, uh, kind of, it's like a rubbery uh, kind of material. Wipe that off and clean it thoroughly so there's nothing on it whatsoever and it's completely dry, then oil that. If that gets crud build up in it, um, it will stop your entire slide from working. So this is like your most precious thing to look after. The back there behind your nozzle. There you go. And that's pretty much the maintenance side of thing here. What you can do is if you are finding that your return is also not working too well, you push down on this plunger here. That will push out of the front of the device. This is kind of your recoil spring uh, or a thing that resets your, uh, your uh, the pistol after firing. Um, oil that up to this little bar here and then fire the gun a few times and that will keep that running smoothly as well. Um, if there are any other parts of the gun you see particularly dry out or have issues, don't be afraid to lube them either. Uh, we'll just keep it in good working order. Um, what you shouldn't do is, is put any of that lubrication down the barrel of your gun. It's a bit of a bad idea. It can just cause clogs, jams, and it also can be a bit of a, a dirt magnet too. 
Awesome, once you've done all of that, it's just the uh, opposite in return. You're just uh, pushing the slide back onto the gun, like so. Put the pin in place, and you're again going to line up with that little tiny notch. Don't line up with the big one, or it will get stuck. Push it in place, and then your gun's fine. Rack it. You're all golden. Now, what I would tend to do after this point is, if you haven't cleaned and done enough work, is to buy some maintenance gas, which is this stuff here. Um, what this is going to do is, it's, it's going to go into your pistol mags. It's going to keep all of the rubber and seals in your pistol mags nicely lubed so they don't dry out and go horrible on you, prevents leaks and stuff like that. Um, what this is also going to do is, is, if you put the mag into the gun, this has got maintenance gas in there now, you rack it. Okay. What this is going to do is, is that's going to put um, other silicons and lubes into the gun itself, which are perfectly safe for your barrel and your nozzle and all of that stuff, which you don't really want to put the, uh, the oil on, which I'll show you later. And it's just going to keep your whole gun uh, nice and clean on the inside. Um, what I'd also recommend is at the end of like a day's play, um, once you've cleaned it, cycle some of this through it. But then remember to refill your mags with the maintenance gas so that they don't ever sit empty. Make sure they have maintenance gas in them. Uh, it just will make your life a hell of a lot easier in the long run. Other than that, um, if I had to give this gun another review and another rating, um, I probably would have knocked points off for the bad paint job. But then again, uh, for the standard mag that comes with this gun, um, we already noticed wear and tear on the base plate just after filling gas up into it uh, when we first got it. So I don't think that EMG particularly have done a great job with the paint on this gun. Um, but as far as the internals, the performance and everything else is absolutely golden. If you also want to know what we're using to uh, to, to, to lube the gun on the inside, um, the Abbey silicon oil um, is fantastic. And if you get a pot like this, I mean, I pay 4 95 for it, as you can see, it'll last you forever. Um, other than that, I hope this review has been mildly useful, if, uh, if anything. Um, if you've got any feedback, feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, I'm going to be aiming to upload a bit more regularly now. I'm going to be reviewing some equipment this week um as well so later in the week or, or next week there'll be some equipment that i've been using that's going up so everything from uh belt equipment holsters stuff like that we're going to put up on this channel as well so i uh, hope you guys all have a lovely rest of your day and um for me that's absolutely it bye